Now on Sunrise, the special session starts today and police reform is top of mind. What one group of Minnesota lawmakers is proposing. Then a plan in place at the U of M, what next semester could look like for students heading back to campus. Minnesota is reopening and that means farmers market season is back on. But how do you social distance in a crowd full of people? We look at the safety measures in place. The Twin Cities best kept secrets. One local author is uncovering them. I did a lot of research and then I got out and about and went and explored. The top two places she says you need to visit this summer. Well, a lot of us are enjoying these cooler, more comfortable temperatures, but 90s are in the seven day forecast. It's Friday, June 12th. Care 11 Sunrise starts now. We stand ready to listen and embrace calls for change. That's the message to you from a group of MPD officers condemning ex-officer Derek Chauvin. Their open letter has hundreds of you sounding off, as you can see right here in our comment section of our Care 11 Facebook page. Jump in on the debate. Use that hashtag. You know it, sunrisers. First, let's take a look at this a beautiful start to this morning. The sun coming up over the Minneapolis skyline right there next to Betty McCoska. Laura, Alicia, it's almost a weekend. We all deserve some time just to get outside. And Laura, it's going to be nice enough for a patio cocktail perhaps, right? Absolutely. Nice for pretty much whatever you want to do outside. Be sure to get some of that crisp, fresh air. Uh, it feels a little cool in the morning, but it's not as chilly as it was yesterday. Winds are calm, though, and that will be a big change from yesterday to today. The wind gusts that we have uh, have moved on, and today they're a little calmer. A lot of sunshine, though. By lunchtime, we're already well into the 70s, so temperatures rise here quickly with this strong middle June sun. 77 is where we're headed, and uh, we'll look for, again, much less wind. The sun came up. It's been up for uh, half an hour now. 526 was sunrise today. Happening today, it is a start of the special session for the Minnesota legislature. Governor Wall says one priority is building a stronger and more equitable economy. Kai Edwards is live outside the Capitol and Kaya, what else will be prioritized? Hi, Gia. Another big one is police accountability and reform. And actually, the state's uh, people of color and, indig and indigenous caucus uh, shared some specific proposals ahead of today's special session. So let's take a look at the list now. It includes reforming the use of force statute, the police oversight board, and prosecution of police involved cases. They also are proposing to ban warrior style police training and chokeholds and to expand training for de escalating tense situations and more training for mental health crisis intervention. Minnesotans deserve better and we absolutely have the capabilities to do better. It's not about uh, liberal versus conservatives. It's not about black versus white. It's right and wrong. Another proposal that uh, has some, uh, I guess, uh, just not support from uh, some Republicans is that they want to also expand the voting rights of people who have felonies on their records but have already served time and are now back in the community. Gia? All right, Kaya, thanks for that. Well, all of this comes as Minneapolis Police Chief Madaria Arredondo lays out his own plan for change within the department. He says it starts with being able to fire bad cops. That's why he's cutting off contract negotiations with the police union. He's also promising to look more closely at officer performance data to identify early signs of misconduct. And the majority of the city council here has pledged to dismantle the police department. However, Mayor Jacob Fry says he won't go that far. Groups including the Minneapolis NAACP and the Minnesota chapter of the Council on American Islamic Relations praised Chief Madaria Arredondo and his decision to stop negotiating with the police union. But they criticized council members for announcing they want to disband the department without a plan. They say no one on the council asked them for input. It is unacceptable for this city council to now pretend that they care about justice, to grab headlines and to grab attention instead of doing the heavy lifting of reforming the police department. City Council President Lisa Bender says the council members who spoke Sunday were invited by groups called Black Visions Collective and Reclaim the Block. And uh, they say they are committed to hearing from every voice in the community. Now we're taking you live from Capitol Hill. Take a look. Lawmakers in both parties advancing their own police reform proposals as President Trump unveils a very different 
plan for change. Instead of defunding, President Trump says he wants to invest in police and promises an executive order to upgrade policing standards. And that means force, but force with compassion. But if you're going to have to really do a job, if somebody's really bad, you're going to have to do it with real strength, real power. The president also vowed to aggressively pursue economic development in minority communities and address health care disparities, and he's calling on Congress to enact school choice. In our digital dive, a group of Minneapolis police officers are now speaking out, condemning the officer, the former officer, that killed George Floyd. Now, the story has hundreds of you commenting on it in our digital dive, so that's why we're talking about it this morning. Now, yesterday, a group of 14 sworn Minneapolis police officers released an open letter to everyone, but especially Minneapolis citizens, condemning the actions of former officer Derek Chauvin. The letter reads, like us, Derek Chauvin took an oath to hold the sanctity of life most precious. Derek Chauvin failed as a human and stripped George Floyd of his dignity and life. This is not who we are. The letter goes on to say that the officers are with citizens who were appalled at how George Floyd lost his life, and they're ready to embrace change and stand in support of Minneapolis Police Chief Madaria Arredondo. Now, the group of officers say they're leaders from all ranks of the department, representing the voices of hundreds of other Minneapolis police officers, saying, quote, we stand ready to listen and embrace the calls for change, reform, and rebuilding. Now, the open letter closes with a promise to work with residents and regain the trust of the community moving forward. And if you'd like to read more of this letter and see who signed this letter, those 14 officers, uh, we do have it posted right now at carolevin.com. Meanwhile, we want to know your thoughts on this open letter to the public from the Minneapolis Police Department. You can weigh in anytime using the hashtag Sunrisers. Yeah, I think, I think Alicia, it's nice to see that uh, there are officers coming out saying, hey, they condemn what happened. And they're also standing with a police chief uh, for deep, deep reform. I think uh, a lot of people are talking about, yes, we right. understand that not all officers are bad, but we want um, real change in the culture of uh, policing. So um, we'll see um, how this goes moving forward. Thanks. Laura, what's the one thing we need to know about weather today? Well, the one thing you need to know is that you don't need to worry about the weather today. It's a lot of sunshine, it's low humidity, and uh, no wind gusts like we had the past couple days. Warmer to the south and a little cooler to the north northeast. And if you're just waking up, no crashes to report right now. Drive times around the metro average. And the good news, no big weekend closures to talk about. Welcome to more on your Sunrise Drive coming up. Well, did you know that right here in the Twin Cities, you can view a rare handwritten letter by Mozart in the same building where a notorious gangster was once chained to a radiator? Yeah, the incredible history in our own city. And it's only one of the gems found in a new book, Secret Twin Cities. Julie Jo Severson has a deep connection to Minnesota. She has spent most of her life exploring the many places and researching the rich backstories revealed in her book, Secret Twin Cities, a guide to the weird, wonderful, and obscure. Well, I talked to a lot, a lot of people, a lot of locals from archivists to bartenders. I did a lot of research and then I got out and about and went and explored. Obviously, Julie Jo never anticipated the book would be released during a pandemic, so if you don't feel comfortable venturing out, you can always plan for your staycation when social distancing ends. This is a great book for building your bucket lists right now for when we get to the other side of this and to, to learn about the history and culture and lots of fun trivia. Understandably, it's hard for Julie Jo to nail down her favorite spots. They do all feel like my babies. I put a lot of energy <laughs> into each one. But we did get her to share some of the more memorable ones, starting with the weird. Hot Sam's and Teak and Photo Park for that one. It, it's not for everyone. It's near Lakeville. The owner calls it his junkyard with a sense of humor. And the wonderful? The moment I turned the corner and saw the Washburn Park water tower that's completely hidden in Tangletown of South Minneapolis, I, my, I, it took my breath away. Then there's the unforgettable, Sweet Hollow in St. Paul. The same tunnel that thousands of immigrants walked through for 100 years, uh, it, that was a monumental moment. I had chills. I, I really felt history. And when we can all roam freely again, chances are we'll never take any of these places for granted again. 
There you have it, some ideas. And I also feel like it's an appropriate place to tell you about our Sunrisers Book Club. So if you haven't joined our Sunrisers Book Club yet, just go onto Facebook, uh, search hashtag Sunrisers Book Club, and you can see what we're reading month to month. And then we chat with the author after that. Well, the coronavirus pandemic has changed a lot of things, even how we shop local. What to expect if you're heading to the farmer's market this weekend. Then a return to campus is looking more likely for you students this fall. The plan that has the backing of the Board of Regents. Plus how history could be made today while fixing a broken piece of Minnesota's past. And the past couple of weeks have been a lot to take in, but the weekend is here and we want to know how you're going to be enjoying your time off. Send us a text. Use that number right there at the corner of your screen. at 763-797-7215. Plug it into your phone. We'll be sharing your responses in five minutes.